subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 10th of February. India's Uttar Pradesh state holds election in key test of PM Modi's popularity. Medicines become expensive in Pakistan manufacturers decry unclear taxation policies. And Long dark COVID-19 shadow looms over Nepal's tourism destination Tamil. And now for all the details. India's most populous Northern Uttar Pradesh state on Thursday held voting for the first out of 7 phases of local assembly elections, a key test for Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his ruling Bharatiya Janata Party. Addressing a poll rally, PM Modi urged voters that it was necessary for his party to remain in power for development, law and order, and ensuring that women can live without fear. India's most populous state of Uttar Pradesh on Thursday held voting for the first phase of a series of local elections that will be a key test of popularity of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party. Keeping power in the bellwether state would give BJP a boost in its bid for a third successive victory at nationwide parliamentary polls due by 2024, and a defeat in any of the other three states it holds that also stage elections this month would add to pressure on the party amid criticism of high unemployment and its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. For the main opposition Congress party, the calculation appears more bleak. Of the five states where voting begins this month, it holds only Punjab in the northwest. Samajwadi Party and Rashtriya Lok Dal are also among the main competitors to BJP in Uttar Pradesh. वो डालना जरूरी है अपने उसके लिए मुल्क के लिए बस इसी वजह से. तो कैसा लग रहा है आपको first time vote डाल? अच्छा है अच्छी feeling है. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a poll rally in Uttar Pradesh Saharanpur, which will go for voting in the second phase. He urged people that it was necessary to vote for BJP for development, maintaining law and order, and ensuring that women can live without fear. Uttar Pradesh, home to around 200 million people, will vote in seven phases ending on March 7. Counting of votes will begin on March 10. The High Court in India's Southern Karnataka state on Thursday stated that students cannot be allowed to wear any piece of clothing that is religious until the matter is pending. as it heard petitions challenging a ban on the wearing of hijab by students in educational institutions the court will hear the matter next on february 14 the high court in india southern karnataka on thursday ordered that students should not wear any religious garments in educational institutes in the state till the matter is sub judice over the hijab row The row erupted after educational institutions in Karnataka barred entry of female students wearing the Muslim headscarf hijab, citing an education ministry order, prompting protests from parents and students. Tensions frayed after some students with saffron shawls, typically worn by Hindus, thronged into classrooms to show their support of the hijab ban. The court said the schools and colleges which were closed earlier this week amid escalating tensions can be reopened and adjourned the matter for hearing on February 14. That when they have not given interim relief then the notification of the uh, notification of the act and uh, act and rule prevails according to the act and rule uh, uh, uniform is must is a uh, unif Every institution has a right to prescribe the uniform, and many schools have prescribed the uniform, and that the school should run according to that. Meanwhile, pro-hijab protests have intensified across parts of India, while authorities have imposed Section 144 against any protests within 200 meter radius from the gates of educational institutions in Karnataka. In news from Pakistan. 
Essential medicines have become costlier in Pakistan with the passage of media budget last month, with chemists and manufacturers decrying the imposition of new taxation policies have led to the price hike. A distributor said the soaring inflation has made life miserable and the way the ruling PTI government is imposing taxes is hurting all businesses amid the ongoing economic crisis in the country. The rates of medicines have increased substantially in Pakistan post the passage of the mid-year budget last month, with chemists and manufacturers decrying that the imposition of 17% general sales tax and government's unclear policies have led to the price hike. This has also resulted in shortage of essential life-saving pills as the supply has been affected, raising worries of patients. A distributor said the soaring inflation in the country has made life miserable and the way the ruling PTI government is imposing taxes is hurting all businesses. This is a panel dollar. The panel was 10 rupees. Today, the panel is about 40 rupees in the market. Why? Because the government's policy is not coming to understand. The government is taxing taxes. The rate of the government is पिछले सालों के मुकाबले में वो तकरीबन 40 टू 50 परसेंट रेट जो है वो इंक्रीज हो गया और अभी भी इस वक्त कंफर्म नहीं है अभी भी रेट जो है वो बढ़ेंगे। The Pakistan government bulldozed the mini budget in January to meet conditions to revive a six billion dollar funding program by the International Monetary Fund amid a current account deficit. Discontent has risen among all sections as tax rates have increased for several items. More news from Pakistan. Opposition Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has challenged Prime Minister Imran Khan to dissolve the National Assembly before his party's long march on February 27. Calling Imran Khan a coward, Bilawal said the nation wants to get rid of the selected government which has led Pakistan into a crisis and said a fresh election is the only solution. Opposition PPP Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Wednesday dared Prime Minister Imran Khan to dissolve the National Assembly before PPP's anti-government long march and announce a fresh election if he is believed the public was still on his side. Addressing a rally in Multan, Bilawal said PPP has decided to start its long march over rising inflation on February 27 from Karachi as it has declared war on the selected government. हम इमरान को चैलेंज करते हैं कि अगर आप घबरा नहीं चुके हैं अगर आप बुजदिल नहीं हो अगर आप इन आवाम से नहीं डरते हो तो हमारा मार्च की जरूरत ही नहीं होगा हमारा मार्च से शुरू होने से पहले आप असेंबली तोड़ दें आप में अगर हिम्मत है अगर आप यकीन करते हो कि ये आवाम आप ही the inflation rate in Pakistan steeply rose to a two-year high of 13% in January. Surging food and energy prices have put PM Khan under increasing pressure, especially from his middle class's support. As Afghanistan is going through a severe economic meltdown, thousands of children face starvation. The United Nations Children's Fund in Afghanistan has warned that one million Afghan children could die from severe acute malnutrition if urgent actions were not taken. UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund in Afghanistan, has warned that one million Afghan children could die from severe acute malnutrition if urgent actions were not taken. According to the United Nations, nearly 23 million people, about 55% of the population, are facing extreme levels of hunger, with nearly 9 million at risk of famine as winter takes hold. Mothers and malnourished children have filled the rooms in Kabul's main children's hospital, the Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital. UNICEF Afghanistan said in a tweet, referring to a two-year-old Afghan child whose photo was attached, Having recently recovered from acute watery diarrhea, two-year-old Soria is back in the hospital, this time suffering from edema and wasting. In another tweet, Medina, mother of three, has spent the last two weeks in the hospital 
getting her eight-month-old Siraj treated for severe acute malnutrition and heart problems. Afghanistan's economic crisis accelerated after the Taliban seized power in August as the former Western-backed government collapsed and the last U.S. troops withdrew. The economic meltdown has tipped millions into poverty and made Afghanistan one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. The United States recently formally exempted U.S. and U.N. officials doing permitted business with the Taliban from U.S. sanctions to try to maintain the flow of aid to Afghanistan. In news from Nepal, an opposition party lawmaker from Karnali province, Dal Rawal, has demanded Nepal's federal government publicize a report on the border issue with China at the earliest. A leaked Nepal government report commissioned last September has accused China of encroaching into western Nepal along their shared border. Dal Rawal, Karnali Province Assembly representative of Nepal's opposition CPN UML from Humla district on Wednesday demanded federal government publicize a report on the border issue with China at the earliest. A leaked Nepal government report commissioned last September has accused China of encroaching into western Nepal along their shared border. The committee was formed to study the dispute over the Nepal-China border. The team studied border pillars, especially in the Limi Valley, and initial findings confirmed that there were some serious border issues between the two countries. Despite all the evidence on the ground, the report is now pending with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Chito Banda Chito, Sarbom Nepali Zantale Tapa on a Guri, Sarbom Kanali Basile Tapa on a Guri, the Umla Basile Tapa on a Guri, Sarbini Gurius, Yedi Somashat Sunbani, Mitrasta Chinson, Kunitik Pahalgarera, Yasusan Gurius, Banete, Onogona Sans. On Tuesday, the government spokesperson Gyanendra Bahadur Kalki reacted to the recent UK media report stating the issue should be dealt with on the basis of reality, not on reports, adding that Kathmandu would study the matter and bring out an official statement thereafter. It was reported that the border encroachment was intensified in Humla during the then KP Sharma Oli led government. But the then Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyavali, referring to a study done in 2016, said the structures were built on Chinese soil. Similarly, the Chinese embassy in Kathmandu had denied that there has been any encroachment. More news from Nepal. Tourism sector in Tamil, one of the major tourist hubs in the Nepali capital, which earlier used to be a buzz with foreigners, continues to suffer as tourist footfall remains low due to COVID-19 pandemic. Nepal, like other countries, was hit hard by a surge of coronavirus infections that affected many businesses due to lockdown. The government has announced that it will ease strict pandemic measures as cases continue to decline. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic has brought uncertainty and spillover impact on almost all the sectors. In Tamil, one of the major tourist hubs in the Nepali capital, there used to be big crowds for refreshment and recreation until the enforcement of lockdown last year. The streets of Tamil, which earlier used to be a bus with foreigners, now can witness only locals and few tourists. Many of the businesses have already bid adieu to the tourist hotspots searching for opportunities elsewhere, and those left behind are struggling to remain afloat. Kamal Raj Singh Suwal just had started his restaurant in Tamil when the COVID-19 pandemic was slowly spreading globally in 2019. With the onset of the pandemic, his business came to a complete halt. As per a survey made by Kathmandu Living Labs in partnership with organizations, about 17% of the tourism enterprises in Nepal has permanently shut down since March 2020. Likewise, 65% of employees dependent on the tourism industry have been left unemployed by the pandemic. However, there's light at the end of tunnel for the locals. 
to revive its struggling tourism industry and lure the tourists to enter Himalayan nation, Nepal government has resumed the visa on arrival scheme, which has kept on hold in wake of the rising COVID-19 infection fueled by Omicron variant. According to the Nepal Tourism Board, the influx of foreign tourists to Nepal has increased over 91 percent. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.